We're going to be in the book of Isaiah this morning, the book of Isaiah chapter 6, verses um, 9 through 13. We're going to get kicked off right there this morning. And the title of the sermon this morning is 7,000 times better, 7,000 times better. And I just want to, before you know, I get into the sermon, I just want to thank to the church for praying for me Wednesday night and Thursday as um, me and my family went down to Florida to... I went down there and preached my great aunt's funeral, and um, I tell you, I really appreciate y'all's prayers. There was a lot, there was a pile of people at that funeral, and a lot of them that you know wouldn't normally go to church services and things, and got to hear the gospel. And so, God was glorified in that. She was a great, and godly woman, and she just amazed me and all that she done. I don't, I don't see how she did all she could do. You know, God helped her is the way she done it, and um, I just appreciate y'all's prayers and appreciate the men that took care of things while I was down there doing that. But um. It went well, so I appreciate it, and thank you for that, and thank you for praying for our family. Um, we're going to be talking about this morning, in a sense, the remnant. And in verses 9 through 13 last week, whenever I was preaching, I, you know, I talked about there was a remnant. There was always some folks that were going to be left that were godly people, even when the generation or even when you know, the popular crowd turned away from God, there were going to be some people left that served God and that God had called Isaiah and Isaiah's mission that he had sent him on after he commissioned him into the ministry was to go and to preach to those folks. And you know, that's like I said last week, there'll be some folks that are dull of hearing, don't, don't get it, don't care about it, don't want to know about it. But I'm telling you right now, God told him to preach and to preach the word the way he'd have him to. And so whenever he went to preach in the word, he wanted him to understand that there was going to be a remnant left. And there's always been a remnant, always will be a remnant left that serve God and that love God. And so, you know, when you look at this, when you take this at face value, and you get to thinking about as a pastor and as a preacher, that you're going to be preaching, you know, um, to a generation largely that, you know, you know, doesn't really care about God and things of God. You can see even in our country, which is founded on Christian beliefs, that they're just ripping the things of God out of everywhere they can. And so when you're facing that and you're facing the opposition, you know, it can be kind of depressing in some ways. And then sometimes you can get the feeling like, man, you know, we're in this thing, we're low numbers, it's going to be a hard road to hoe. And it can be kind of depressing to you. And you can kind of get the mully grubs. And so that's kind of what I want to talk about and preach about this morning, is, is what God has done in the past to help people who may be in the minority, who may be in the minority whenever they're sharing the Word of God and living out their Christian beliefs. But stand with me in honor of to reading God's Word this morning. Verse 9 of chapter 6 of Isaiah. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, till the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. And the Lord hath removed men far away. And there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. That's what I'm talking about. Great forsaking of God in the midst of the land. And it says, and, But yet it shall be a tent, and it shall return, and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak, whose substance is in them when they cast their leaves. So the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. Dear Heavenly Father God, as I preach your word, God, I just pray that your word would speak to our hearts this morning. Lord God, we thank you for the wonderful song service this morning. We thank you for the fellowship we have with other believers and just this wonderful bunch of people gathered here this morning. Pray, Lord, you bless their homes and families. The visitors who are here, God, we just pray you'd help them to feel welcome. Bless their homes and the ones that are traveling back and maybe going off to home. I just pray you keep them safe and bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now see, literally, literally, God, because of judgment he brought upon Israel, is going to take... The, you know, the majority of the people are going to be gone out of the place. And it is going to be literally desolate. And um, so literally that's going to happen to them. But I'm telling you right now, there's people that check out on God. You may see their body. You may hear their words, but they check out on God. And that's one of the things he talked about. That these people that Isaiah is going to be preaching to wouldn't, you know, wouldn't hear what he was having to say, wouldn't listen. And so it could be a daunting task for a preacher and a man of God that when you start preaching the word, you know, you have opposition against you preaching the words, one thing. And then the other thing is, sometimes you could be preaching to people, and, you know, they don't seem to be getting it. They don't seem to be into it. They don't seem to be on fire for God. You know, it doesn't seem to be affecting their life in a great way. 
And so sometimes you can get down and you can get depressed about those kind of things. But I'm telling you right now, God is on the throne. God is on the throne. And you know, God can bless us in bad situations. God can bless us in bad situations. Now this can do with witnessing. This can do with living a Christian life. This can be with anything that you're dealing with in your life. I'm telling you, you may be dealing with any and everything. There's no telling. Most people never know what you're going through by just looking at your life from the outside. Most people never know what you feel by looking from the outside. You know, we really don't connect with people on that level very much. And so you really don't understand what's going on in a person's life. So it can look as beautiful as it can be and as perfect as it can be on the outside. And things on the inside be terrible. So it's not only just on the outside that things can be depressing, but you can also feel the things on the inside and them hurt you too in trying to walk for Christ. And you know, God can grow us in bad situations. He really can grow us in bad situations. Now I want to tell you something that, and most of you know, I like to listen to Billy Graham preach, you know, like the classic crusades. Well, I was listening to one of them last night. One of the things he said was he went into a foreign country where they were being persecuted. And the people were being persecuted. They might be killed for their faith. And they were under heavy persecution for being Christian people and trying to serve God. And, you know, he, he told the man that he was talking to, he said, hey, listen, we'll be praying. And, I, you know, I may not say this word for word, but you'll get the gist of it. We'll be praying for you that God will help you. And, you know, get, you know help you all to have the freedoms we have and the things we have in our country. And this is what the man said. The man said, this, now this just amazed me. The man's under heavy persecution in a place where he can be killed for living out his faith. And what he said was, I, you know, I don't want the persecution to go away. And I don't want to have the things of this world that y'all have if it's going to distract me and take me away from God the way it does y'all. I just chew on that one right there, buddy. I was sitting there like, wow, last night. So here this guy is under heavy persecution. We're over here praying. They'd have a life like ours, and he's praying he don't have a life like ours because simply here in America, most people, when they complain about what went wrong, why they ain't serving God, it just really don't amount to a hill of beans. You understand what I'm saying? It's really just little insignificant things compared to them. And what that man had the wisdom to see was that that persecution he was under and the lack of this world's things helped him keep, be keyed in on Christ. And that Christ was enough for him. And the biggest thing he wanted in his life was not just things and not just comforts, but he wanted to be closer to Jesus. And so that's what he did. And so God can grow us in bad situations. And as a matter of fact, most of the time, that's when we grow the most. It's hard to grow on a mountaintop, spiritually wise. And so here you have a remnant. You can sometimes feel like, man, I'm the only one left. And I'm telling you, you get the mully growth. You can sometimes feel like, man, it's just too bad. And, and you get to saying things like this. You ever said things like this? Well, there just ain't no use in it. Or you look at the task God has called you to. And you say, well, I just can't do that. You ever said that? Or said it this way. It's just too much. I can't do this anymore. I mean, I'm telling you, you could be sitting in the church. You could be in leadership in the church and get these feelings, get these thoughts, and be defeated. Not because God can't help you to do what He's calling you to do. Not because you can't do it anymore. Not because you're not making a difference. But because you're not looking through God's eyes at the situation. And with God's heart. And what God can do is when He sees you in that situation is lift you up and help you to come out of there and go in to serve Him. And that's my prayer for every one of you this morning. That's my prayer for me. Is that God, hey, if you've got that attitude and maybe you quit 10 years ago and ain't got back started serving God. You know? Maybe somebody hurt you or was mean to you around a church house. You know, maybe somebody disappointed you. Maybe somebody failed morally that you had confidence in. But I'm telling you right now, God knows when you're in those situations and He wants you out of it. He wants you serving Him. He gave us a great example. Turn over, if you would, with me to the book of Romans, to chapter 11. I want to read you something now. This is good stuff right here. Every Christian needs to hear this and needs to remember this. Verse 1 says, I say then, had God cast away His people? The answer is no. 
And God forbid, for I am an Israelite, and the seed of Abraham, and the tribe of Benjamin, God had not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Won't ye not that the scripture saith of Elias, talking about Elijah, how he maketh the intercession to God against Israel, saying, Listen, this is, what, this is what the man of God said. This is what Elijah said. One of the greatest men in the Word of God who finished well. You understand what that attitude will keep you from doing? It will keep you from finishing well. He finished well. He rode out of here on a chariot of fire, man. I mean, you can't go out much more blazing glory than that. Listen to what it says. They have killed thy prophets and dig down at altars. And look what he says in that verse 3. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. Now, can you hear somebody saying that? I'm the only one left, and everybody's out to get me. You, you, you get it? You get it? This is too hard. It's too overwhelming. I'm too little. The task is too big. See, one of the problems in the whole situation was he didn't have a realistic view of the situation. He thought he knew what was going on. But the reason we have to trust God and listen to God instead of ourselves is because God sees things and knows things that we don't see and we don't know. He knows everything. He sees everything. And he's got it under control. He's got it worked out. He knew exactly where you're going to be this day right here. He knew exactly where you're going to be. He knew exactly what you'd need. He's got it worked out. He's got it laid out if we're just following. But that's what Elijah said, one of the greatest men of God in history. He said, I am left alone and they seek my life. He had done, he had such a wrong view of what was going on, fear had set in. See, after a while, what you start doing when you, when you give up, when you quit, or when you get overwhelmed, and, and you just don't have enough faith, and you just don't trust in God, and keep going and doing what God would have you to do, then you start operating not out of faith, but by fear. You don't do this because you're afraid of that. You won't go here because you're afraid of this. What if I do this? That might happen. And that's what you get worried about. Instead of walking by faith. See, Elijah had one time was af wasn't afraid to die. He would stand in the king's face and point his finger at him. Tell him he wasn't doing right. But he could have been killed by that man. Now we all know God could keep him being killed. You know, just like I say sometimes, I'm immortal to God won't take me home. God, I'm telling you, I'm in God's hands. So until God gets through with me, I mean, ain't nobody going to take me out of him. But he wasn't afraid. But he had let that mindset set in to the point that he had started operating out of fear instead of faith. So I ask you this morning, are you, the way you operate in your everyday life, are you operating because of faith in what you believe in Jesus Christ? And because you trust Him, and you trust His Word, and you trust what He's doing in your life? Or are you operating out of fear? Which one is it? Because you want the peace of God. Well, let me tell you, the peace of God only comes when you operate out of faith. When you walk around operating out of fear and don't listen to the Word of God, and don't uh, you know, submit to the will of God in your life, and you walk around afraid, you can't have the peace of God. But I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you something right now. There's something, there's something God just puts in you now. It ain't something that you got on your own. It ain't just because you're tough. You understand what I'm saying? Some dudes are in here thinking, well, I'm tougher than that. They don't nothing scare me. I tell you what, I don't care who you are. There's some things, there's some things come around that can put some fear in you. If you operate in your own strength. Now, I wasn't ever much afraid of what somebody done with me. But son, when my little baby girl had a chance of not making it out of that delivery room, I was afraid. You understand? And I'm telling you right now that, that you start operating out of fear, and you're going to fail. But the peace of God comes with There's something he puts in you when you know you're doing his will. When you trust him. 
There's something about when you get down on your knees and you say, God, I can't do this on my own. And you know I'm scared. You know I'm afraid. And you know I really don't want to do this. But you give me the strength and I'll get up and go do what you want me to do. There's something he takes and supernaturally through the power of the Holy Ghost of God. I know Baptist folks don't like to talk about the Holy Spirit too much. Come on. They get it kind of loose in here, son. They get a little scared. They get a little scared it might mess up their schedule. They get a little scared about mess up their way of life. They get a little scared about to give up some things they shouldn't have around. Anyway, they get a little scared that if God gets control of your heart, something will go wrong. Let me tell you something. Something will go right. And he'll put something down inside you that all the devil and all the uh, demons of hell, that every army in this world that is evil and against God couldn't take away from you. And if they take and burn you at a stake, beat you down, lock you up, they can't shut you up. Amen? They can cut your tongue out and you can hum just as I am. Amen? I'm telling you right now, there's something God puts in you that you need. That I ain't talking about just that a Sunday school teacher needs or a deacon needs or the preacher needs. That you need when you go to war out there in your everyday workplace. But I'm telling you right now, what God did was He gave Elijah a realistic view of what was going on in the world at the time. Look at what he goes on to say. He said, but what saith the answer unto God unto him? He said, what did God say about it? Now see, normally this is the last place we go. Normally we make our mind up, we see what we think, we do what we want. And then we go to God when we mess it all up. And so Elijah had, had run from it, he was scared to death, he had the mully grubs. But what did God say? What did God say about it? He said this, I have reserved to myself. God said he'd reserved to him 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. This was the God that they were wanting to, the false God that they were wanting to worship. This was the reason they were wanting to take Elijah. He said he had 7,000 men that he'd reserved to himself that had never bowed to the image of Baal. Look in this verse 5. Even so then at this present time, there also is a remnant. According to the election of grace. I want you to understand something. I want you to get something today. There are some godly people in this world. And I'm telling you right now, you need to get off of the mully grubs. I'm telling you right now, you need to quit whining and complaining. Because I'm telling you right now, great men of God, he had the wrong idea of what was going on in the world. And God showed him that it was 7,000 times better. He thought he was the only one left. Now, I ain't good at math. But ain't 7,000 to, 7, to 1, ain't that 7,000 times better? If I'm wrong, man, y'all math teachers wait till afterwards and correct me, all right? But listen to me. It was 7,000 times better than what he thought it was. 7,000 times better. And even if it had been, this is the thing, this is the thing that just really excites me. Even if he had been the only one left, him and God was enough. Even if he had been right, Brother John Ed, and he was the only one, the only man of God left in all of Israel, him and God would have been enough. I mean, when? When has God quit being enough? Not just in our modern day churches. We want to talk about the, uh, the government and the churches, we don't talk about the leadership in the churches. We want to talk about everybody else. But I'm asking the question, when did God quit being enough or ever has he, have you he ever had a place in your life where he has been enough? When has God quit being enough? When did you have to have this and have to have that and everything be this way? Were you better live for God? When did God quit being enough? Don't you know that excited Elijah when he found out there were 7,000 men that hadn't bowed their knee to Baal? Don't you know that excited him? Just let me tell you something. That's why we need to be vocal with our Christian faith. There might be somebody at your workplace that feels the same way Elijah does. May feel like they're the only one in their workplace because you've never said a word. This is why we need to let the world know that we still are in love with Jesus Christ. And He still matters the most in our life. 
Because it encourages other believers in a way that you, you just couldn't understand. I'm telling you, 7,000 times better. And if it had just been him and God, God was enough. And God is enough for you today. I don't care how, how deep and dark the situation is. I'm telling you right now, I don't care how rocky the road. I don't care how heavy the hurt. God is enough. And God of, of, of the universe, God of creation, the God who put the heavens and earth in their place, loves you and has his eye on you every second you live and breathe. Watches every heart beat. And he wants you, he wants you to follow him and to, and to live a life of love where you're just infatuated with him. And he wants you to have peace each moment, each storm you walk through. He wants you to have even more happiness when you walk on the mountaintops and things are going great. He wants to enrich those moments and be there with you. He's wanting to hold your hand. He's wanting to lift you up. He's wanting to heal your hurts. That's what God is wanting to do this morning. What we've got to do is we got to look at the situation for God's eyes. we got to realize it's much better than what we think it is. It's getting worse, there's no doubt. But I want you to think about this now. Before you, your next step, before you, you leave here, I want you to look around at some things. I want you to look at our freedoms. I'm still free to preach the Word of God. And there are some things that I'm still willing to go to jail for. You know what I mean? I mean, if Stephen got to come get me, he'll come get me. One, I'm preaching the Word of God. Now, you hurt my family, that might be another one. Amen. But I'm telling you, preaching the Word of God. But we still got freedom to preach the Word. You still got freedom to study the Word. You still got freedom to spread the Word. Ain't it bad as you think? Most of it is the hopelessness in our country is we're not spreading the hope. Look at our friends. It's not as bad as you think. Look around here this morning. All these other believers, look at these people hugging and loving on you. Lord, I, I thought the meet and greet thing was going to last 30 minutes. Amen? I love that. But look at your friends. Look at the people that help you. Look at the people be over there with Miss Lisa tonight. Look at the people that, that uh, help with Randy's stuff. Look at the people that helped inside of this church and look at what they do in the community. I mean, I'm telling you right now, it's not as hopeless as you feel. You've got friends. You've got people that love you. There's people in churches all across this country right now that are good God-fearing, Bible-believing folks that want to see the world saved too. Amen? Want to help their neighbor and forgive them that trespass. Still some folks like that all across this country. So we still got friends, good godly friends, just look around. And you know what you need to do when you look around? You need to say, thank you, Lord. Amen? Now, you ain't got to say it if you don't want to, but if you want to say it right now, I'll say it. Thank you, Lord. When's the last time you've done that? When's the last time you, thought, you thanked him for what's got going on in your life right now? The great things we have. Think about all the people that have invested in us not as hopeless as you feel sometimes there's people still trying to invest in you still trying to invest in your family and your children think about what we have in God we've got the Holy Spirit of God living inside of us you hear me my friend ain't nothing hopeless for us we got Jesus Christ on the right hand of the Father making intercession for us you can be right here you can be down in South America in the jungle and you can pray and the Lord will hear you and he'll intercede on your behalf. You've got the Father in the heaven. Look at what we got in God, y'all. Looking down upon you, providing you every need. Loving on you when you need it. Always there to listen to you. Think about what we've got. And just be reminded, man, it might not be 7,000 7, times better than what you think, but it's not as hopeless as it feels. As Christians, we always have hope. The thing, the question is, are you going to hold on to your hope? And that hope has the name Jesus Christ. Or are you going to embrace your fears? I'm telling you this morning, you want peace in your life. 
Submit your life to God. Give up the things you need to. Come to Christ. And I'm telling you, hold on to hope. Quit embracing your fears, man. Start walking by faith instead of out of fear. It'll change your life this morning. That's all I feel led to say this morning from the Word of God. I'm telling you, I really feel like this morning there's some people in here today. I don't know all your situations. Like I say, sometimes people meet me at the back door and they'll say, Preacher, you know, if somebody told you about what's going on with me, I'd be like, Nah, brother. I ain't been peeping in no windows. You know what I'm saying? I don't be creeping too much stuff. I ain't saying I don't ever creep things. <laughs> but I don't be creeping too much. You know, you're always checking on, checking on your kids and on your folks. But I'm just telling you, God knows where you're at. God sent this word for you because you need to encourage And like I said, it don't matter if you're a preacher, Sunday school teacher, church member, or even somebody that ain't ever been saved. You need hope. You need encouragement. I'm telling you today, you've never given your life to God or maybe you fell away from God. You want to renew that faith and that hope. You come today. You can pick right back up where you left off. God's right there waiting on you. Golly, he's so good to us. So much more than we ever deserve. But you just come as you feel led this morning during the invitation. Let's stand together. And you just come as you feel led. We got Miss Tiny coming. We got Nick coming.